Hey, y'all. We're back with more River Talk. Been a while. I mean, it's been a long while since uh, our guest joined us, Deacon. Mm-hmm. Going way back. Well, tell me about our guest. Well, it's uh, Wallace Evans Jr. Wallace. Yes. All right, brother. Good nice to, to meet you, man. My pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. It's great to be here. Yeah, Father. It has place. been a long time. Yeah. I think when you came on, you had just maybe joined. Was that it? Oh, uh, maybe so. I mean, I, I, I'm 05, maybe, 06. Uh, I've been around since 2000. I became the ED in um, 04. So, you know, okay. somewhere 04, 09, between that, that, that little time period All right. there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, now, wait a minute. A father's place. Yes. Now, I've heard of that. Mm-hmm. Can you tell tell me, along with these folks, All right. what that's about? Well, we are a father engaged in initiative. And what we believe is that dads make a difference in the lives of children. And so when a father's involved in a positive and healthy manner, just the outcomes for children are just better. So we just provide an array of supportive services all geared towards helping fathers mm-hmm. be actively involved. So from employability services, helping men get on a career path, um, to understanding uh, their roles, their rights, and their responsibilities. We assist with visitation, um, custody, um, access to children, um, just understanding what it means to be a great dad. So we have right. weekly peer support meetings in each of our offices, and we're serving a four-county region um, Ori, a lot George, of real Town, estate, in Williamsburg man. County. Yeah, we've got four offices. It, it is. It is a lot of real estate, small staff, but we're able to do uh, an effective job of reaching um, men throughout the community. I look at us as a one-stop shop. You walk in our doors, we're going to do a comprehensive assessment, and we come up with a unique tailored plan called a one-man plan for every man that enrolls in our program. And so we're going to be there to help guide them and direct them um, to be in the great dads that they're called to be. I believe that fathers are at the foundation of the family. Oh, yeah. And when when you look around the society, you see many problems. And and at at the root of that, you're going to find that there's going to be some family issues. And at the root of those family issues, a lot of times it's going to be some father issues. And so we're building strong dads because we want to build a strong community. Wallace, I like you already. (laughs) Well, I like you too. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't want to say that there's a cycle, but a lot of times that comes into play. That, Absolutely. You know, get, I had a bad relationship with my mm-hmm. dad, and he had a bad relationship with his dad. Exactly. And, it is cyclical, and, 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 you know, that's part of what we're doing is trying to break that, that long-term cycle mm-hmm. of, of men and young ladies that have a father wound. Because mm-hmm. when, when, when a dad disappoints, it hurts. Yeah. Whether he's just completely absent or was just not there in a good way, right? That really damages. And, and I've had the, the opportunity um, to work with so many men over the years. And when you see a 60-year-old man in tears because of the relationship with his father. Yeah. yeah that, that's, that's, that's tough. That is bad. Right? Yeah. Spent his entire life carrying oh, this weight, wow. this baggage, right? Oh, yeah. That's tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, they hold it in. Exactly. And then, it, you know, it, but it pretty much kind of shows mm-hmm. uh, later in life. Exactly. You know, especially when they have their own children. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, because, I mean, I've, I've kind of been through that. You know, my grandfather was a preacher. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, them preacher's kids. <laughs> You've heard them stories, haven't you? Mm-hmm. And my I'm a daddy used kid. to. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. And my daddy. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Well, my daddy would get behind his, while he was preaching and blow uh-huh. bubbles because he wanted his daddy to look like Lawrence Welk. Well, mm-hmm. you got a head pop every once in a while, that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. but he was my granddaddy was like forty or so when my father was mm-hmm. born out of out of eight children. Mm-hmm. He was the youngest, and so uh, my father, uh, you know, and he didn't have a lot of time. He didn't take him hunting. Mm-hmm. They didn't golf. They didn't do anything. So mm-hmm. my father did not show us how to do we went fishing we mm-hmm. we did a little bit of stuff but he he was not taught to do a lot of things mm-hmm. you know so that, of course i end up in radio mm-hmm. but my, but it's funny because mm-hmm. my father used to sing on the radio mm-hmm. that was his uh, gig so right. i kind of i caught some stuff off my own father mm-hmm. but but he was a good dad but he didn't have you know the the uh, uh tools right. i guess you could say uh, to be a great dad, right? You know, but I still love my that, dad. That, I mean, that's the great word that you use, tools, because that's what right. we do. We mm-hmm. give men the tools, the tools, okay. tools that's right. to be great dads, right? Because a lot of times, you know, we look at men as the disciplinarian, and there is a role for us to be the disciplinarian. But what we teach men is that you're there to disciple, right? Part of the dis- disciplinary that 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 disciple. You're there to teach, to train your children, right? And so, too often, it becomes about corporal punishment. Um, and so many men don't have the tools to know how to discipline properly. And so right. um, all they use is what they know, the belt or, or, or a switch or things of that nature. Mm-hmm. 
But we want to give them tools to understand that there are better ways or other ways to, to navigate and discipline and, and be a great nurturer for your children. Because sometimes we're, we're great providers, but we're not there emotionally. Sure. Right, we're not right. there engaged in their lives to direct them, to pour into them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a big difference. I mean, I had a great relationship with my father. Early on, though, he, it was more the provider role. Right. Because he had three kids. Mm-hmm. He's struggling to build his business. Mm-hmm. I get about 13, 14. There was a lot more father time there, but you mm-hmm. know what 14-year-old yeah, boys you want to do your own thing. Oh, yeah. Right. We'll do our own thing. Exactly. But, <laughs> yeah. but looking at it and seeing what he was trying to do for my brother and sister and not appreciating, and then you get, like, mm-hmm. these whole family dynamics mm-hmm. that, you know, there's overcompensation mm-hmm. for the second and third kids. Mm-hmm. So you can love people too too much yes mm-hmm. i mean that can be a trick that you want to smother them with love that you use your tools too much right right i mean it, it this there's it, no yeah I, it, it's difficult being a parent mm-hmm. uh and, and it's getting even more difficult as time goes on with social media and all these other things but yeah that's part of what we try to help men understand is how to strike that balance right you've got to provide men we 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 we're strong about men providing materially and financially for their children you have to provide mm-hmm. you're called to be a provider a protector right in order to be a protector you've got to be there and engaged and involved even if you're not in the home with your children sure. you've got to be aware of what's going on with them you got to know who their friends are you got to know where are they going what you know what sort of activities they're involved in and then you call to be the priest of the home right you call to provide a spiritual foundation for them well you know they could be your friend mm-hmm. but they're also your father mm-hmm Mm-hmm. You know, and a disciplinarian. Right. You know, okay, son, you're not going to start smoking at the age of six. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the tricky thing for me. Candy cigarettes, is, fine. Is <laughs> that, you know, fortunately when it comes, I mean, my wife and I do not agree on everything right. in life. But when it comes to, like, our son, mm-hmm. fortunately, we're pretty much on the same page. Oh, it good. goes without saying. Mm-hmm. That can be tricky, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that not always. Occasionally, we've we've had some issues where after mm-hmm. something would happen with our son, we'd have to, like, okay, family meeting, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wouldn't have done yeah. it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't get my way all the time. But you got to have that consistency. And that can, do you work with that? Because it can be tricky. The mom mm-hmm. who's there, if they have major right. custody, which is a lot of, a lot of times the mm-hmm. case, uh, that, that can be a little bit tricky. Yeah, we because got, a lot of times fathers can pay the price or the kid pays the price just – Absolutely. I mean, we have, um, you know, certified mediators on staff, and so they do a lot of mediation between um, the mothers Mm -hmm. um, because there is a lot of relationship issues, a lot of relationship baggage that are preventing them from operating as good co-parents. So, yeah, we do a lot of uh, mediation between them and also between the maternal grandparents. Um, A lot of times the maternal grandmother, um, you know, especially if you're in a never married situation as a single mom, the the grandmother, the maternal maternal grandmother is going to have a lot of authority and and, and exercise some control. So it's sort of us working with the entire family unit, always focus on the children because we're about building strong children. And if we can get these two parents to work together, Mm -hmm. right, that, 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 that is the key. Set aside all these other things that are irrelevant to, to, to the situation of rearing strong children. Like, so that's what we do. We do a lot of mediation and try to help, help them navigate through um, those difficulties that they're experiencing. But it, it, is, it is a challenge. Well, you know, it's uh, prevalent. my yeah. parents were divorced uh, when I was mm-hmm. five years old. Mm-hmm. But my mother insisted my father still be that's a good. part of it. Yeah, so, so he was around all the time. You know, he was a phone call away. Hey, mm-hmm. the boys are acting like idiots mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. I'll be right over, babe. <laughs> Yeah, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, so we always had the discipline. You know, we always had the father and the mother. Mm-hmm. Yet the father was not living at the house, right? Which was to me very, very smart. Mm-hmm. But know, this is smart. an issue too. Mm-hmm. You know, that transcends the, the, every skin color, Absolutely. cultures, and boundaries. Oh I mean, yeah, the absolutely. Church, the divorce rate in churches is fifty, fifty-one percent, mm-hmm. which is would, would be mind-boggling to someone who's not plugged into mm-hmm. the church. This mm-hmm. is something that everybody is dealing with. Everyone is dealing with relationship issues, trying to navigate because it just there's it's so, so challenging, mm-hmm. right? And so I, that's why I, I love the work. I mean, obviously I'm biased. I work for the organization, but I think the work is so critical because we're working with building strong men. If we can build strong men build strong fathers we can change a community oh yeah right because when we have strong because what happens is when when there are no fathers around soon there are no grandfathers around soon there's 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 no father presence there's no manhood presence and in in, in in that absence in that gap young men are going to look for something they drift right, right into gangs exactly yeah uh, one of my favorite quotes 
It says, well-fathered boys don't need gangs. Mm -hmm. Well-fathered right. girls don't need gangs, right? Because what they're getting in a gang, dad, right. mom, a good family unit will sure. provide. So they're turning to these things, and so we see it all over the community. We see shootings and things happening. It's going to tie back to the family. A lot of times it's going to tie back to the father. Well, how does one get plugged in? Wow. So you can reach out to us. I mean, of course, social media, Facebook, um, uh, a website. Give us a call at 843-488-2923. 843-488-2923. Um, you know, certainly we would love to speak with you. We have a weekly orientation in each of our offices that talks about how to enroll in our program. Uh, and so you go through that, and then from there you can um, be in, in, go through intake and be enrolled. Now, I want to do point out that though our, our core services are for fathers, our employability service, we have an employability um, career coach. We have an employment boot camp on a monthly basis at least once a month. And that's open to anyone within the, computer, within the community that wants to improve their economic stability, want to get into a career path. Because in our program, J-O-B stands for just over broke. And we <laughs> want to move people from just right. over broke sure right. yeah. into a career. But the reality is just being broke is more than just finances. Because sure you, can, you can make money in, in an occupation but be broke emotionally, be broke physically, right, be broke mentally, right? So we want to help people find their fit, right? right. When you find your fit and you get it on a career path, you're not just, just over broke anymore. So we do a lot of employability uh, and helping men and women um, be empowered, know that they can achieve success. Uh, That's awesome. Mm -hmm. A happy pappy is a good <laughs> pappy. A one man plan. That's kind of yes. neat. Yeah. So, it's good. so you tailor it to each individual. Absolutely. You can't cookie cutter. No, this. Not, no not, not cookie cutter at all. It's going to be after we do a comprehensive assessment, it is going to be his individual plan with a timeline, with ob goals and objectives. We're going to help guide him, and it runs the gamut. I mean, it's getting better employment it's getting a better, better relationship with the mother of the children better relationship with the children it's reading more with the children because we, we we emphasize literacy and academic success it, i mean really running the gamut getting an apartment purchasing a home whatever it might be we're going to help them create these goals and then create the steps to get to accomplishing those goals you got the a site the dad facts .com. Yeah. it's a new campaign we have it's called the dad facts .com. and we started with some of the negative statistics it's you know, absent dads equal child poverty. Absent dad equals substance abuse. Absent dad equals teen pregnancy, right? We're talking about the fact that when a dad is absent, children are two to three times more likely to live in poverty, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Children who don't have a positive dad or more, in, we've already talked about it, juvenile delinquents, teen, teen pregnancy. They're long, more likely to have sexual activity, activity earlier and get pregnant early. So, we're talking about those stats. You see some billboards around. We're, we have it on social media. And then we're going to be rolling out some positive um, um, facts. Because when a father's engaged in a positive manner, it's just so much better. The outcomes are better. Oh, yeah. Academically, oh, yeah. socially, you name a metric, it's better when a dad's involved in a positive manner. Where's the funding come up from from you folks? And, and, and can people donate and make contributions? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we rely upon um, the community um, to donate, to support our work. Uh, we have a mix between uh, government funding, um, state funding, and local foundations, and of course, generous community members. Uh, our annual event called Building Future Ceremony occurs every February. Okay. Now, we, if you look on our website, there are some sponsorship opportunities there. We're looking for solid auction items. But that ceremony is about us celebrating individuals, corporations, and organizations that are doing good work to build community. Awesome. So last year, this uh, 2021 will be our third year. Um, last year, we uh, Judd Kuhn won the Pinnacle Award, which is our highest award because of his great work with veterans. Um, Tidelands Health, because of their work within the community, won um, another, another um, um, leadership award. Um, we honored Greg Hembry uh, and a few others that are just doing some tremendous work. So we've got a small business leadership award. We've got a corporate award. Uh, we've got a father of the year, which is I definitely want to you know, encourage people to go on to our website. And if you have a great dad, please vote for your father and submit that, and we'll be selecting the father of the year um, in 2021. Man, that's awesome. Really mm -hmm. is. I mean, when you start going back, and, and, and this, is, this is the one idea we hear, that this is, this, what you're doing is one of those unifying things that brings people from everything together because it truly is the family. That was the first institution that, yes. that came into play for mankind yes. was the family. Yes. 
Absolutely. And yeah. that's where your communities come from. Man, good seeing you again. Good seeing you as well. All right. Sure enough. Yes, yes sir. Wallace Wallace Jr. Yes, sir. Father's Place. Good stuff. Hey, we nice got more in just a moment.